What's going on guys? It's Ryan Huber here with my friend Steve Martinez. He's a flight instructor as well in the Deer Valley area out of Phoenix. And we just wanted to talk to you guys about the most common reasons people will pass or fail a check ride. And what goes into kind of the whole check ride process and some tips to give you guys on how not to fail in the simplest terms and what are some of the most common reasons people fail on their check rides. So Steven, in your opinion, what is the most common reason someone would fail a check ride? Well, one of the most common reasons, in my personal opinion, at least, um, has to deal with the fact that the majority of students um, bank on getting a certain DPU over another DPU. Mm -hmm. You know, they have this whole, you know, mindset saying, oh, this DPU is a lot easier. He's not going to ask me about this, 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 so I don't have to study that. Yeah. In comparison to this other DPE that will literally take it line by line by line by line through the ACS or PTS for whichever check ride they're using. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it shouldn't really matter. No. You know, mm -hmm. If you get the easy DPE or the hard DPE, yeah. because as long as you are taking your ACS line by line by line and you're able to sit there and answer all the questions accordingly, then you should pass regardless. Exactly. Yeah. I mean. You basically have all the questions in front of you that they're going to ask, like, you know, for the weather information on ACS, they're going to ask you about fog, yeah. mm -hmm. they're going to ask you about, you know, different types of icing. Yeah. So you know what they're going to ask you, so if you're going to sit there and just be like, oh, he's not going to ask me about that, and then you go into the track ride, the first question they ask yeah. you is like, hey, tell me about the different types of ice. Yeah, you sit like, there and you're just like, oh, man, that wasn't on the gouge. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> then, you know, yeah. obviously you're not going to walk out with a... Yeah, you're going to walk out Passing feeling pretty bad. Passing certificate yeah. you're going to have a notice exactly. of disapproval. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't really matter which DP you get, just to mm -hmm. reiterate. You should be able to go ahead and just take it line by line exactly. by line, and you should be pretty yeah. straightforward at that point, in my personal mm -hmm. opinion. And at the end of the day, you shouldn't be training for the check ride. People, it, it's so easy to just cha train for the check ride in right. order to pass the ride, but it's train for your career. At the end of the day, do you want to know 100% of the information? and pass knowing everything with flying colors, or do you wanna know 60% what you thought you had to know and then pass, but then you go into the real world and you're like, oh man, I completely forgot about that. Like, yeah. what, what's an ILS again? You wow. Just memorize like, it for the check ride yeah, exactly. and you just forget about yeah, it. Yeah, and then you go into a job and you look like a fool because you're flying <laughs> with some captain and like, who is this clown? So, you know, train to train and go above and beyond. You know, you should be able to you know, know as much as possible, not just right. whatever the DPE, you know, whatever the, the kids are saying you need to know or whatever the, the gouge is and stuff. So really train to perfection as best you can. And like Steven said, know your ACS or your PTS. Um, I can't believe that some people will go into a check ride and not go over, you know, line by line or right. the tasks and the scenarios are expected to know. It's all laid out there for you. You can go online, get it for free, print out a nice ACS, get it bound up at a Kinko's and highlight, go through that thing and know exactly what you're gonna be asked. If you go through that in conjunction with like the oral exam guide, it lays it out perfectly, pretty much exactly what you're gonna get in the oral. And then you see all the requirements, all the tolerances for every maneuver. So, you know, be familiar with what is asked of you and you're bound to succeed. So another thing is communication, I think is one of the biggest struggles people have during check rides and it's not so just talking but there needs to be a clear communication between you and your examiner of what's going on at all times especially in maneuvers this is where we both see this the biggest amount somebody will do a maneuver say a steep turn they'll go into the steep turn and they'll say all right like do steep turns now and they'll just start doing stuff or they'll be like stall to start clicking buttons pulling flaps and it's like wait a minute you know what's going on here right Every time you should do something, it should be for a reason and you should talk about it because at the end of the day, in your airline career, your jet job, anything, you're, there's going to be CRM, crew, man, crew resource, resource <laughs> management in place so that you, know, you don't just pull flaps and the captain doesn't know what's going on. There's always a vocal cue with what you're doing so that the crew's always on the same page. So treat right. your DPE like a crew member to the point where he knows exactly what's going on. I'm starting the maneuver at this altitude, this airspeed, this heading, right. so that there's no, you know the tolerance, they know the tolerance. So it's not like, oh, I thought I was 50 feet off when you're really 100 feet off. It's everything is clear cut. It just makes it so much easier. Right, and just going off of that, um, 
basically what I tell all my students is to pretend like your DPE does not know anything about flying. Pretend mm -hmm. like he's completely brand new at this. To so tell him, you know, hey, we're going to start it off at this altitude. What we're going to yeah. go ahead and do next is do a 45 degree turn to the left at 110 knots. We're going to use this power setting. It's basically babying it through every single bit. Completely. Especially at the very, very beginning. Like as soon as like as soon as you enter your private pilot stage, that's what I do with all my students. At yeah. least. Mm -hmm. I make them get into doing that habit because as soon as they go into their CFI, check rider, you know, MEI, whatever, they're already used to being able to talking about it and doing it at the same time. Exactly. But like I pick up some random students, you know, with instructors have their days off or whatever. I'm like, okay, I'll take your students fine. And I say, let's go into a steep turn and they're like, Okay. Next thing you know, they're adding power and going to a left hand turn. Yeah. Without saying it's anything, like, so you don't know this? if it's a clearing turn, you don't know, you don't know if yeah. it's a steep turn, you don't know what's going on, and then you finally piece together, oh, he's doing a steep turn, <laughs> yeah, and you know he didn't have his power correct, he didn't have his power setting, you know, mm -hmm. just baby, basically, just want to go ahead and baby everything when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. Be like, I'm starting at this altitude, this airspeed, this degree of bank. Are you ready? Here yeah. we go. An another thing is that goes into stuff like the passenger briefing. Right. Like for a commercial check ride, passenger briefing and stuff like that is huge because they're testing you on the fact that you can be a commercial pilot and somebody who's never flown in an airplane in their entire life comes along, gets in, never even used a seatbelt, and they're just like, okay, I'm, I'm here. What, what's going on? And you can explain to them, okay, this is how the seatbelt works. This is how the fire extinguisher works. This is how you get out of the airplane. Right. This is what happens if I have a heart attack and you got to do something. Like you have to explain these things to people because it's so easy for us to just expect stuff and like, oh yeah, they know how to get out, they know what a seatbelt is, they they understand that I'm talking to ATC and you know what, they might have no idea. So right. commercial pilot means that you can fly, you know, practically anybody for hire, not just somebody who knows aviation, has been flying, so, or even private pilot check ride. You take your, your uncle up, who's never seen an airplane, he's been in Uganda for the past 20 years in a creek, like, <laughs> you gotta, you might have to explain something to him. So it's, you really have to be transparent. And that goes into two, the oral, por oral portion of the check ride. You know, clear, ask to clarify on questions and really be on the same page. If, if they ask you something and you don't know what they're trying to say, be like, okay, so you mean this, right? Because if you start going down one way and they want you to go down another way, it just creates tension. So really make sure you're on the same page with the examiner and you know, everything is clear and transparent. And then um, another thing, very important, is preparedness. Sure, you just tell them, tell them the story you're, you're just talking about with a student unprepared. So I had this one student. Um, he wasn't my student throughout the entire time. I just kind of signed him off for one of his check rides. Um, just picked him up randomly. Uh, my manager assigned him to me. And I don't want to say names or anything like yeah. that, but he was going for his uh, commercial pilot check ride. And he had his check ride at six o'clock in the morning with someone who he considered to be a easy DPE. And so I get there at five o'clock in the morning, keep in mind it's my day off, like I'm here to like, you know, make sure everything's gonna go okay for him, make sure, you know, the DPE yeah. has everything that she wants, um, make sure that he's prepared for his check ride. And I walk in, and he's just standing in the lobby. I'm like, so you ready to go? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, like, yeah. where's your weight and balance? You know, where's your nav log? Where's yeah. everything? He was like, oh, I didn't think I had to do that. I'm like, what do you mean you didn't think you had to do <laughs> yeah. that? It's a commercial pilot check, right? Yeah. So basically, we scrambled around for like an hour, trying to get everything done quickly and quickly and everything else. And it's the beginning of the end at that point. Yeah, seriously. Um, so basically what ended up happening is that I kind of saved his butt in that aspect of doing his weight and balance for him really quickly, make sure everything was okay. And then he got sent off to his check ride. Needless to say, he, he ended up not passing. Yeah. Because he wasn't for prepared for stuff. Um, so you just want to go ahead and take that into consideration. You always want to get there early. You always want to make sure you're prepared, have everything laid out, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, with like flying wise you want to pretend like the person that you are going to go ahead and you know have your check ride with or whatever does not know anything about flying so you want to sit there and be like all right here's my nav log here's my weight and balance for today's flight you know here's all my certificates my medical here's everything laid out one by one by one so when he you know he walks in or she um she already knows he or she already knows that you are fully prepared yeah. for this check ride and mm -hmm. has a good positive outlook on you 
as a first impression instead yeah. of having this one guy who's like, oh yeah, yeah, let me, let me get all my stuff, uh, sit here mm-hmm. somewhere, goes inside his backpack, yeah. like opens up a crinkled piece of paper, <laughs> slams yeah. it on the desk. Yeah. So. It's like, if you make their job easy, then they'll make your job easy. Right. If they go in there and like, oh my gosh, this was so great, there's, you know, pilot certificate, medical, logbook, boom, 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 it's all just laid out, numbered, step by step, you've got it all out on the table, then they're going to be like, wow, he's so prepared, this just makes my life so easy, check, 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 because at the end of the day, they're getting their 500, 600, 700 bucks, whatever it may be, and their time is valuable. So, you know, if they can do things quickly and easily and they don't have to stress about stuff, they're not worried, am I going to sign off somebody that's going to hurt themselves, hurt somebody, if they're confident in you, then it's like, wow, it makes it so much easier for both of you guys. Right. And it just gives an incredible first impression. And regardless of what anybody says, people are going to judge you. They're going to make an impression about you in the first four seconds they meet you based on common psychology or however however you want to think about it. So it's like as soon as you walk in, look at them in the eye, smile, shake their hand, hi, nice to meet you, I'm ready, I'm excited. Even if you're not, like, you know, make a point to make a good connection with them, especially if it's the first time you've ever met, met the person. So that way it can go as smooth as possible and you present yourself well. Right. Because if you come in, you look real nice, you show that you're ready and you really care, that's gonna translate so much into the process going forward because they know you're nervous they know you're gonna mess up on things, so you might as well go in, you know, as confident and as prepared as possible, you know, because if, if you go in looking like a slob, like just rolled out of bed, you know, you have a crinkled up, oh yeah, is, that's a that's my my medical, oh, oh okay, cool, like <laughs> you're like, what is going on? You know, right. they don't want to sign you off to fly, you know, people for hire or be cruising around in a you know archer like around the city, you know, like it, it's a big deal. So like, give them confidence in you and be confident in yourself, make a good first impression, it'll help so much. Yeah, confidence goes a very, very long way, uh, not only into aviation, but just everyday life as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so be able to go inside a check ride, just like what Ryan said up here, be able to go inside a check ride and be confident in what you say and what you do and everything else, that translates, you know, extremely, you know, well, I don't know how I want to put this, it, it, it translates extremely well for you in regards to being able to, you know, sit down and basically pass your check ride because um, I know that there was times when I didn't know the answer to a particular question mm-hmm. but I was confident in saying the answer I was like yeah. you know what this is the answer yeah <laughs> they were like oh mm-hmm. maybe that is the that's answer. one of the biggest things actually <laughs> on my MEI my MEI um, I got asked a question he was talking about the the center of the center of lift on the wing and if it moves back or forward, depending on if you add flaps. Uh-huh. And the correct answer is that it moves rearward as you add flaps in, the center of pressure of lift. Right. And he asked me that, and he's like, are you sure about that? Are you sure? Like, really? You're telling me that right now? And I'm like, yes. Like, yeah. yes, absolutely. He's like, oh, really? He's like, prove it. And I'm like, okay. So I'm digging through my binder of notes for like, I don't know, five, ten minutes trying to find this thing. And then finally, he's like, you know what? Forget about it. Like, you're on, you're right, 100%. He's like, I just wanted to test your confidence and see if you were like were confident in right. your answer. And he was like, if you would have like, you know, said maybe or tried to change your answer for me, he's like, I would have failed you. And that's one of the biggest things that I was like, wow, like that's a test, you know? Right. And that's what I do with basically um, all of my um, students as well, especially at the private pilot stage. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of my students didn't like me for that aspect, but they realized why I was doing it. So helpful. Like for instance. Um, back at ATP when I was mm-hmm. signing this one guy off for his private multi-check ride <laughs> like I used to ask him to tell me everything about the systems of the aircraft I'd, yeah you know, tell me everything mm-hmm. and he would say something to me and I'd be like are you sure and then he would sit there and be like uh, yeah uh, I don't know um, yeah. maybe you know basically having him second guess himself and I'm doing that on purpose to see if he's gonna sit there and be like yes Steven mm-hmm. shut up I'm right you do this all the time yeah like, you want to see the notes here it is right here right yeah. there it says it right there mm-hmm. So basically, the reason why I do that is because a lot of the DPEs like to do that as well, like to see if we're gonna be able to be confident in that aspect. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, when he went to his check ride, yeah. DPE drilled him and was like, oh, are you thing. sure? Yeah. He was like, yes, you're like the 50th person to ask me <laughs> yeah. this question. I can show you right here. Yeah. And he passed the like, check yeah, ride with flying colors. If you're walking onto your 737, you're a captain at Southwest, and you're you know, going about your deal, and someone tries to tell you, the landing gear is square, or like, the tires are square, like, you know, something dumb. It's like, right. no, they're not. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I can, I can smoke on this flight. It's fine. But like, 
okay, cool. Well, this regulation right there says, no, it's not. Like, <laughs> you know, it's like, don't let people sway your confidence. And then one thing I used to do, goofy or not, like have a little drill or something in your mind, to kind of like reiterate the confidence in yourself to make sure that you pass. I used to record videos like this for my YouTube channel and I'd be like, hey, I'm gonna go take this check ride right now. I'm gonna show you guys a certificate when I'm done. I'll be back when I pass. And as confident and as like arrogant as that sounds or whatnot, like it's putting that in your mind to like make you think that you're gonna pass. Right. It just, you know, creates the conclusion for your story that you want and leads you towards that. Right. So it's just like, it's just a mind trick. I used to go into the bathroom after my orals and I'd talk in the mirror and I'd be like, you're a commercial pilot, you're a commercial pilot. And just like feed myself positive energy just to like make myself believe it. So it's just like, yeah, I would say like, you're a commercial pilot, you're just proving to this guy that you are. You know, and just like, oh yeah, I'm just another flight. Hey, I'm a commercial pilot. And you don't say that to him, but it's right. like, you know, you gotta believe it. You gotta, you gotta see it and visualize it and make it happen. You can't be like, oh my God, there's no way. <laughs> like, right. I'm, I'm failing. <laughs> like, right. And then go in there and expect yourself to pass. And you're, you know, shaking. Everybody's nervous. You know, the DPEs know it too. Like they'll come up and they, you know, my MEI, same DPE, like as I was waiting around for him early, it was like five in the morning or something in Jacksonville. He comes in, he's like this big Navy dude, like dressed in like camo. And I'm like, oh, this has got to be the guy. So immediately I'm like, hey, are you, you know, so-and-so? Like, nice to meet you. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I can tell you're nervous because there's either like one of two reactions students do. Either they'll immediately run to me and like try to introduce themselves and make a good first impression, or they'll sit back in the room and wait for me to enter, <laughs> like scared, <laughs> and be like, oh, hey. So, and they're like, and they'll just like, they know, like, because you care. If you're not, you know, you should care about your check ride <laughs> outcome. So it's just be as confident as you can, um, communicate. Um, you know, make sure you're on the same page with the DPE, come in prepared and do some of these tips and tricks and it'll make you that much better, help you pass your check ride and try and keep those failures to a minimum. So thank you guys for watching, you know, leave any comments for me, for Steven about um, our jobs, what we do and um, how you guys can better pass your check ride. Uh, we're both in the ATP um, students and alumni group on Facebook. Ask questions in there. We're over, I think, a thousand members, like 1,100 members now. Yes, sir. So throw some comments in there and um, let us know how we can help you and continue to help us. Thanks, soar your full potential and have a great day. See ya. Peace.